Welcome to the Gaylord Palms Resort and Convention Center here in Orlando and the next in our series of primary debates for 2018. Tonight, the top two Republicans in the race for Florida governor face off. Good evening. I'm Brett Baer. And I'm Martha McCallum. Before we start tonight, we are still following the tragic events of this afternoon, a shooting at a newsroom in Maryland. The latest that we know is that at least five people are dead. Multiple people are injured, and the gunman is in custody. The people who work to bring you the news became targets today. We still don't know why. It's one of the deadliest attacks ever on U.S. journalists. We will be getting to this topic later in this debate. But first, some other questions facing the candidates, issues key here in Florida and to the nation. So let's meet them. First, we have Adam Putnam, the Florida Commissioner of Agriculture. And we have Ron DeSantis, a congressman representing Florida's 6th district. Welcome, gentlemen. The rules of the debate are simple. Candidates have 60 seconds to answer the questions, 30 seconds for follow-ups, and 30 seconds if their name is mentioned by the other candidate. If either candidate goes over their allotted time, they will hear this. And it does set off dogs around the nation <laughs> thinking it's the doorbell, so we're trying to avoid that. So let's get to it. Commissioner Putnam, uh, Justice Anthony Kennedy's retirement announcement uh, could have a major effect on many issues, considering that he was the swing vote in the U.S. Supreme Court. Abortion may be one of the biggest. Both of you here on stage said that you would sign the heartbeat bill here in Florida, which would ban abortions after a fetal heartbeat is detected. So the question is, that is viewed as a direct challenge to Roe versus Wade. Given that, do you believe that the next Supreme Court justice should vote to overturn Roe v. Wade. Well, first of all, our prayers are with the good people in Annapolis, and we're certainly grateful for the law enforcement officers who responded so rapidly. Welcome to Florida, Brett. Welcome to Florida, Martha. And what an exciting time to be in front of such a live audience of a thousand Florida Republicans. It's a uh, completely different than, uh, than a Washington, D.C. studio. And I just want to say, welcome to Florida, Congressman. It is. Um, I am thrilled. I am thrilled that President Trump has a second opportunity to remake the U.S. Supreme Court with a constitutionalist justice. This is going to be exciting for decades to come. We look forward to seeing who it is. It will be, if they're anywhere near as good as Justice Gorsuch, Gorsuch has been, it's an exciting time for America. Yes, I've said I would sign the heartbeat bill. Yes, we need a constitutionalist on the bench, someone who is not going to try and make law from the bench, but someone who will abide by our Constitution and protect and defend life. So, so that means yes. It should be a justice who overturns Roe v. Wade. We should have a strict constitutionalist on the bench, someone who recognizes the individual rights in this country, someone who also recognizes that our founders intended that you defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I'm honored to have the support of the Florida Family Action Council in the governor's race in here, here in Florida because they know that as governor, I will always pursue a pro-life agenda here in Florida as Florida's next governor. Okay, Congressman DeSantis, same question to you, considering the Supreme Court nominee that will be up here. Uh, your, your question, would it be someone to overturn Roe v. Wade? So I'm proud to have the endorsement of President Donald Trump in this race. And I think that Donald Trump has done a better job appointing judges to both the U.S. Supreme Court and the appeals court than any other president in my lifetime, including one of my heroes, Ronald Reagan. So God bless Donald Trump for doing that. And I think the opportunity to replace Justice Kennedy uh, is really a historic opportunity. It should be a constitutionalist in the mold of Justice Antonin Scalia or Clarence Thomas, that who understands the proper role of the court is to apply the law and constitution as it's actually written, not to legislate from the bench, not to impose a judge's philosophy on the rest of the country. And I say there's an analog here in Florida. 
The next governor in all likelihood is going to have three appointments to our state Supreme Court, which is a historically liberal court. They're activists. They legislate from the bench. I can tell you this. I am best positioned to identify those candidates for nomination to the state Supreme Court who are going to apply the law faithfully and will not be judicial activists. If we get it right, we can end judicial activism in Florida for a generation. Congressman DeSantis, today President Trump announced that he will meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin for a summit on July 16th in Helsinki, Finland. He sent a tweet this morning saying, quote, Russia continues to say they had nothing to do with meddling in our election. But Vice President Pence, Secretary Pompeo, Vice, uh, President Trump's own intelligence agencies have stated that interference did in fact take place. So who is right? So here, here's the thing. There's a difference between what Russia may have done. I think they're always up to no good, and I think that they tried to do cyber stuff in our election. But that's much different than saying that there was collusion between Trump's campaign and Russia. There was no collusion. And I've been on the front lines not only demonstrating that in the Congress, but uncovering the anti-Trump bias that really permeated the FBI during critical junctures of this thing. You got the guy that opened up the collusion investigation, Peter Strzok. He opens up the investigation a week later. He said, no, Trump won't be president. We'll stop him. And then a week later, he texted his lover and said, we need an insurance policy in case this guy wins. So I've been one of the few who were out there from the very beginning. When Comey was fired, I was right there saying that was the right thing to do. When Mueller was appointed, I said there was no basis. In fact, I was on your show hours after Mueller was appointed. I didn't have my finger in the wind. I wasn't waiting for what the polls or the media said. I knew it was wrong, and I stood for what I believe was right. Mr. Putnam, as you just heard several times, President Trump has endorsed your opponent. Why is the president wrong? Well, first of all, I know that the president is going to more than hold his own in a summit against Putin. And I'm proud of him for taking it on, and I'm proud of his agenda to make America great again. But I'm running a Florida First campaign. I care more about the schools in Washington County than what's going on in Washington, D.C. I care more. I care more about what's going on in Ruskin, Florida with congestion and infrastructure and the quality of our water than I do about what's going on in Russia. And I care more about the other St. Petersburg, St. Petersburg, Florida. A Florida first agenda is going to put vocational and technical training back into our schools. It is going to increase the types of career opportunities that keep our brightest and best here in Florida and make us a magnet for talent from around the world. That's the job of the next governor of the great state, to put the third largest state in a position to help make America great again by our strength here in Florida. Well, Commissioner, considering all of that, tonight, are you prepared to endorse President Trump in 2020? Most assuredly, and I look forward to campaigning with him as governor of Florida. Well, that would be the first time you ever campaigned with him because and when Donald Trump was trying to win Florida in 2016, Adam Putnam did not attend a single rally with him. You couldn't find Adam Putnam if you had a search warrant. Commissioner, do you want to respond? Look, I support our president. I support our president's agenda for our country. I support the fact that all of us paid less in taxes this year because of Trump's tax cuts. I love the fact that he's taking it to our so-called trading partners to defend Florida farmers, to fight for American jobs. I love the fact that he went to Singapore to meet with the North Korean government so that he can denuclearize that peninsula. And I love the fact that he's getting another Supreme Court justice. And I love that together, we all get to watch America get better by the day while Hillary explains the title of her book, What Happened? What happens is she lost. That's what happened. All right, so Congressman DeSantis, uh, as you pointed out, you have the support and endorsement of President Trump. But according to two recent polls, your opponent has the support of nearly twice as many Florida Republicans as you do. You have made a lot of appearances on our network. That is true leading Commissioner Putnam to say that you're running this race from a DC TV studio. 
You also have more than 42% of your campaign contributions coming from out of state, from people who cannot vote for you. So how do you respond to what he's charging here? Well, look, I mean, I think he said that, that I'm not, uh, haven't spent enough time for The fact is, I was born and raised in Florida, grew up in Pinellas County. My le Little League team went to the Little League World Series representing Florida on, the, on that world stage. Um, I went to Dunedin High School, worked $6 an hour to try to make something for myself. I didn't have anything handed to me. Uh, but the truth is, there are definitely uh, times when I wish I could have spent more time in Florida. For example, the Christmas of 2006, I wasn't home with my family. I was in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba at the terrorist detention facility, not as a detainee, as an officer. <laughs> and then the next Christmas in 2007, uh, I was in Fallujah, Iraq, working for the commanding officer of SEAL Team 1. Would have loved to have been in Florida with my family. But sometimes duty calls, and sometimes you got to step up and do what's right. And some of the things that I've been doing lately to support our president's agenda, just this morning, I was in Washington doing my job, grilling Rod Rosenstein about why there was anti-Trump bias in the FBI and DOJ, why they're not coming clean with us, and why they were monitoring the Trump campaign. So that's what I'm paid to do. So I'm going to do my job and, and, and continue to run the, run the race. But at the end of the day, both of the things are very, very important. I'm going to keep doing both. But what about the point of, that 42 percent of your contributions come from out of state? Well, you, with Florida, you got to understand, there's a lot of people who spend half the year in Florida. So they have an interest in doing that. All, a lot of these people that they talk about are big supporters of President Donald Trump. Donald Trump himself spends a lot of time in Florida. He's not necessarily a Florida resident. And I think what's going to happen because of the tax cuts we passed, getting rid of the subsidy for high tax states, I think you're going to see people reevaluate and say, why do I have this business in Illinois or Connecticut? I can bring it down to Florida. And I think you're going to see us have a great opportunity to do better in finance, technology, and manufacturing if we have the right policies and if we build off the great success of Governor Rick Scott. Commissioner Putnam, you know, in recent weeks, we've seen a real rise in incivility, uh, specifically around the issue of border policy. Uh, just last week, Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi was harassed at a movie theater here. Uh, I'm sure you could rattle off uh, specific examples of democratic incivility. Uh, but many Democrats and even a few Republicans say that President Trump set the tone here at the beginning. Uh, during the campaign, you were one of those critical Republicans. Congressman DeSantis mentioned it there, but you did call Trump in the campaign vile, obscene, dishonorable. So, so does, he deserve, does he deserve some of the blame, as his critics suggest, in setting the tone for this moment? I did not call the president those things, and I support the president. And the president did not set the tone that the Democrats are trying to blame him for. They ought to look at some of the things that Maxine Waters has said over the years, not just recently. Look at many of the things that have been said. But look, your question about out-of-state influence uh, in Florida, the real danger isn't what's going on on this stage. It's the fact that George Soros and Tom Steyer are trying to hijack Florida politics. And it's not because, it's not because they care about how long we spend in traffic on I-4. And it's not because they care about the quality of our schools in Northwest Florida. And it's not because they care about the quality of water in Lake Okeechobee. It's because they care about one thing and one thing only, and that is defeating our president, taking back the White House, and that won't happen in Florida, and that won't happen on our watch. We can't let the left hijack Florida's politics, Florida's governor's mansion, Florida's cabinet, or Florida's legislature. Don't let it happen, Republican Party of Florida. Let me just respond with terms of, because uh, it's personal. I, I was about a year ago on the baseball field in Alexandria, Virginia, and um, I was throwing balls to Steve Scalise, who was playing second base, and Jeff Duncan and I, who was playing short, decided we'd try to beat D.C. traffic. And we left probably about five minutes before Steve was shot. And as we were leaving, we were getting into a car, and a man who we didn't know came up to us and said, are those Republicans on the field? We didn't think anything of it. We're like, yeah, it's the Republican team. We pull away. Two minutes later, he grabs a rifle, sets up on the third baseline. I would have God, thank God I wasn't there because I would have been in that line. And he shoots Steve. And he, was, he would have shot 10 or 15 Republicans. And so he was motivated by anti-Trump rage. 
He was a raving lunatic. But here's the thing. If there were a Fox News viewing Trump supporter who did that for Democrats, the media would view it as the biggest thing in world history. There, they swept it under the rug. People didn't even talk about it after a week. So this, uh, this incivility, I don't think it's a two-way street. I don't blame Donald Trump for that. I blame that guy and all his left-wing friends for whipping up this frenzy. And I'm leading the fight right now in Congress to censure Maxine Waters for her conduct. Of the, of the election, there are those who say that you know it, it's fine to point the finger at Maxine Waters and whoever else you want to and say that that's uncivil behavior, and I think a lot of people would agree with you. But they say the president is the president of the United States, and he has a role to play in restoring that civility. Does he? So here's the, here's the issue, and I deal with this all the time. In, in Washington, in the country, Trump has almost the entire media against him. Fake news day after day after day. He's got the entire Democratic Party after him. He's got the lobbyists after him. He's got the bureaucracy after him. And he's got some Republicans who come after him to kneecap him. And so he is under an attack like no president has faced. And he is standing tall for us. He is working hard. So the last thing I want to do is go out there and lob hand grenades at the president. I think we need to support the president, understand what he's up against, and understand he's facing opposition unlike any other president we've seen. Commissioner, you want to respond? We have lost a number of law enforcement officers in the state of Florida this year. And I think that it's important that we remember the things that were said by the last president that undermined the men and women in law enforcement, that questioned their commitment. They stand on that thin blue line between order and chaos. And I believe that anyone who wants to point the finger at President Trump needs to look at the comments that were made by President Obama. They were anti-law enforcement, anti-sheriff, anti-cop, and make absolutely certain that everyone in Florida know that the next governor will always have their back. This method of incivility did not begin with President Trump. It's only reported by the left-wing media because they want to undermine our president and the conservative movement. All right.